Alrighty, hi everybody. I'm excited to be a part of this event. Um, my name is Naya McAdoo, for those who don't know me. Uh, my pronouns are she, they. Uh, I'm super excited to be a part of this. Uh, the book I'll be reading today is called Working the Roots, Over 400 Years of Traditional African American Healing. It's by Michelle E. Lee. So I'm going to go ahead and just show the book a little bit yeah i'm super excited um to be sharing this so i'm gonna like read the back a little bit because it just kind of gives uh like a description of what the book is about um so african-american traditional medicine is an american classic that emerged out of the necessity of its people to survive it began with the healing knowledge brought with the African captives on the slave ships and later merged with Native American, European, and other healing traditions to become a full-fledged body of medicinal practices that has lasted in various forms down to the present day. Working the roots over 400 years of traditional African American healing is the result of first-hand interviews, conversations, and apprenticeships conducted and experienced by author Michelle E. Lee over several years of living and studying in the rural South and in the West Coast regions of the United States. She combines a novelist's keen ear for storytelling and dialogue and a healer's understanding of folk medicine arts into a book that makes for both pleasant, interesting reading and serves as a permanent household healing guide. Divided between sections on interviews of healers and their stories and a comprehensive collection of traditional African-American medicines, remedies, and the other common ailments they were called upon to cure. Working the Roots is a valuable addition to African-American history and American and African folk healing practices. Yeah, so like, I'll show y'all. This is the author. Yeah, so I'm super excited. Um... I'll just kind of like open it. I've been through it already because uh, I <laughs> like couldn't wait to get it. But yeah, like the table of contents has like a has like a lot of awesome stuff in it. And so like um, so there's a how many two I think there's yeah so there's like two parts um, and. So they all kind of each chapter has like their own um purpose. So like part 1 is healing narratives. So um like chapter 1's reclaiming our natural healing tradition, chapter 2 is strong medicine, chapter 3 is spirit work, chapter 4 is coming full circle, and then ailments in medicine. They have a chapter on uh preventive healthcare ailments and their remedies and there's literally like a whole there's like pages and pages of um like different ailments or diseases or whatever and then how you can work to get rid of those with like holistic healing that has been used in um you know african-american um communities and stuff and there's a chapter on animal care and then there's a chapter on medicine and it has literally like a whole list of natural um ingredients and stuff and how you can prepare it for certain things um there's a chapter on conjure and hoodoo remedies um yeah and i mean yeah there's a chapter on women's health men's health there's a chapter on, um, like, babies and children. Um, so, yeah, like, there's a bunch of stuff in here. But basically what I did, what I decided to do uh, is I'll read something um, that, the chap that the author kind of put in here before the preface. And um, basically, like, the dedication of the book is for our ancestors our elders elders and the generations that carried this holistic science through and beyond the middle passage yeah so i will just kind of i've sectioned off the book and kind of um different things that i thought people would enjoy um kind of like learning and reading about uh especially like stuff like you can find like every day like aloe cedar like different stuff like that um you know that you can use kind of naturally uh some of the stuff that i did find though i know is um 
sacred medicine to uh, indigenous communities. And so I want to, before like I read about those things, I just kind of want to um, put that um, out there that some of this stuff is kind of used in closed practice ceremonies. Um, so which stuff like cedar and sage are some of those things. But uh, I found this really awesome uh, little like story um, in like the medicine section. Uh, so I'll start there. And there's also like pictures and stuff with, with it, which is really cool. So a note about the origins and medicinal properties of gumbo. And then there's a recipe following that, uh, which is really cool. I grew up watching my grandmother and mother make filet gumbo. That was the only gumbo I knew until my early 20s. Our family would eat filet gumbo two or three times a year, usually on the holidays, Christmas, Easter, and Thanksgiving. My grandmother's gumbo was better than any gumbo I have ever tasted in my entire life, whether made by all the other grandmothers of the world or made and served in a restaurant. Mama, my grandmother, Evelyn Pryo Bernard, would send, would send to New Orleans for her filet in Louisiana hot sausage. If a family member or friend had a plentiful crop of hot peppers from which from which they made their very own louisiana style hot sauce mama would get that too the basic ingredients were all back home southern there was nothing comparable or acceptable as a substitute up north making mama's gumbo was an all-day affair it was slow cooked in a big stock pot which we always called the gumbo pot even when it was used for other dishes the fresh ingredients were strategically added one by one, each in its own particular time, so that the flavor would not be cooked out or the texture of the gumbo turned too mushy. Nothing that had been previously frozen was used, and we didn't know anything about such a thing as farm-raised seafood. The shrimp, oysters, and crab were tender, not rubbery, and had a sweet aftertaste that melted in your mouth. They were wild-caught, fresh from an ocean that had not yet been too polluted to eat from. My grandmother, who was all of 4 feet 11 inches tall, barely tall enough to reach the stove or counter without aid, used a step stool to get all the needed utensils and ingredients and to reach the top of the gumbo pot. Mama was very deliberate and precise in her cooking, never using measurement tools. She was the gumbo scientist. Mama's gumbo was always slamming good. Similar to how soup is sometimes the first course is a multi-course restaurant meal, Mama's gumbo was served first at family meals in special gumbo bowls a scoop of white rice would be put in the bowl then the gumbo rich with crab shrimp oysters louisiana hot sausage chicken wings ham and all the fixings would be added after that it was get down time the crab parts that had a lot of meat and were steeped in the gumbo juice were my favorite i'd break the shell in the right place at the top to reveal the meat then suck it out with such delight <clears throat> the juice dribbling between my fingers and down my chin and my napkin or bib Sometimes mama would make hogshead cheese as well. This was almost as involved as making the gumbo, but in a different way. She would carry a bucket on the bus through, through North Oakland downtown to Housewives Market, buy a whole hogshead at the fresh meat counter, and bring it back home in the bucket on the bus. Mama would put the whole hogshead in the big gumbo pot, fill it with water, and slow cook it until the meat could be pulled off with her fingers. She'd strain out all the gel-like innards from the brain cavity, chop the meat in a small, into the smallest pieces possible, then drop it into a pot mixed with onion, garlic, celery, bay leaf, peppers, basil, salt, cayenne, and other herbs and spices, and an all-purpose Creole seasoning. Taking about four cups of the liquid that remained from straining out the brain innards, she would slow cook the mixture for about 20 minutes. When it was finished cooking she would pour it into a casserole pan to be chilled in the refrigerator until it would gel mama's hog head cheese was served with saltine crackers along with the gumbo it would i would put a slice on a cracker dip that in the gumbo juice and put it straight into my mouth all the flavors and textures slowly tantalized my taste buds i'd repeat that as much as i could get away with when i was growing up i thought the filet gumbo the tribe of gumbo mama made was the only authentic gumbo that existed Filet is made from dried and ground sassafras leaves. It gave the gumbo its early taste and its earthly taste and texture. Mama always added the filet at the end, both while the gumbo was cooking and just after it was finished, using the seasoning for thickening and flavor. 
I later learned from family members that our grandmother actually often made okra gumbo rather than filet gumbo when she lived in New Orleans. She made either one or the other, but never combined them together. Both the filet and the okra are thickening agents. Adding both to a gumbo at the same time made it too thick. For my grandmother, deciding on the type of gumbo to make was more a seasonal matter than a seasoning matter. Okra is a summer fall crop. When okra was available for harvest during the summer or fall months, mama would make okra gumbo. But when okra was out of season, she'd make her gumbo with filet instead. This is probably how many gumbo making people in old traditional New Orleans decided which type of gumbo they would make. It was a practical decision laden only with the bias of availability. Gumbo, particularly okra gumbo, is often associated with its African origins as the Bantu word for okra is ki ngombo. Besides using okra as the thickening agent, Africans used it to give the gumbo its distinct flavor. In reality, however, gumbo is both of African and Choctaw origin. One holiday when the family was eating gumbo, my uncle Alvin Poyadu shared with everyone that the filet gumbo we eat has Native American roots, specifically from the Choctaw. His father was Mississippi Choctaw, and some family relations refer to them as Creole Choctaw. The Mississippi Choctaw first used filet as a seasoning, often in stews. Even the word gumbo may have been derived from the Choctaw word combo, meaning for filet. Both the okra and filet ground sassafras leaves have medicinal properties. Filet powder is supported to detoxify the body, regulate blood pressure, and alleviate arthritis, rheumatism, bronchitis, gastrointestinal problems, and skin eruptions. Okras, mucilage, I'm, some of these I might butcher, so don't judge me. Um, yeah. The, sli the slimy stuff um, acts as a laxative and lubricant of the intestinal tract. It is high in dietary fiber and is effective against diarrhea and constipation. As I got older, I learned that there were only that there were other types of gumbo besides filet or okra. Texas style gumbo uses tomato sauce as a base, something I'd never seen in filet or okra gumbo until recently at my sister-in-law's house where she uses all three. And what was called the poor man's gumbo had chicken and sausage instead of the usual seafood medley. Yeah, so I'm going to show you guys a picture. It's in black and white. But there's a picture of the gumbo and there's and there's the recipe. Um, the rest, the uh, grandmother's recipe for the filet gumbo, which um, I can which I can um, have that like added um too so if folks want to try to prepare you know something new then they can do that which i think would be awesome um so yeah so now i'm just going to go back through like i sectioned off like uh different parts that i thought would be like interesting for people to uh learn about yeah <laughs> um so yeah so the first one is pumpkin seeds um and so under under like what it is it kind of tells you exactly um like what it helps with so for pumpkin seeds it expels intestinal worms yeah so the there's a botanical name i don't think that i'm gonna get these right um but if you know them you know maybe you can teach <laughs> teach me how to say in the right way um so the medicinal properties of pumpkin seeds uh is anthelmintic anti-inflammatory emollient diuretic teneicide vermifuge again too i don't know what all of these words mean i will have to look them up myself uh this is my first time getting into this book so um, we're kind of all in this together. Um, so the health benefits of pumpkin seeds. In African American healing traditions, a mixture of pumpkin seeds, Jerusalem weed, and molasses was used to expel intestinal worms and parasites. Pumpkin seeds are packed with protein and essential minerals including magnesium, zinc, potassium, iron, m manganese, phosphorus, amino acids, and vitamin A and C. Eating pumpkin seeds may also support a healthy prostate, liver, and heart, 
prevent kidney stones, reduce postmenopausal symptoms, help prevent bedwetting, and ease arthritis. So the preparation and application, which is like one of the things that I really enjoy about this book too, is that like, so they give you the health benefits and then they tell you like how to prepare, um, like <clears throat> how to prepare the material depending on what you're needing it for. So there might be a whole different preparation process for, um, you know, different things that you may need, whether it's like, you know, to help inside or something outside of your body. Um, so the preparation application to expel intestinal worms, crush two tablespoons of pumpkin seeds and one tablespoon, one tablespoon of Jerusalem weed and mix with molasses so that it has the consistency of porridge. Eat first thing in the morning on an empty stomach, drink plenty of water, repeat if necessary. Add pumpkin seeds to foods such as salad, cereal, desserts, muffins, and as a snack, which I think we all enjoy <laughs> pumpkin seeds, uh, especially salted ones, for sure. I know I do. It's like one of my favorite things, especially in the fall time. Easy to snack on. Uh, so the next one I decided to do was onion because I felt onion was something that we all like use on a daily basis if not like every other day it's easy to find in your kitchen can be stored easy you know so i thought this would be a cool one to do so onion can be used for colds flu congestion coughs cuts toxicity so uh for the medicinal properties it's used for antibacterial antifungal antimicrobial antioxidant anti-parasitic, antiseptic, antiviral, and diuretic. So the health benefits. Onions have been used as medicine and food for thousands of years in global healing traditions. Onions contain many medicinal agents that are beneficial in treating numerous ailments, making it an excellent immune booster and preventative health treatment. Onion medicine is often used to treat and prevent the common cold, flu, congestion, res respiratory problems, cough, asthma, allergies, bacterial infections, cuts, wounds, angina, angina, I think that's how you say it, and blood toxicity, heavy metals. Adding onions to your diet regularly may lower cholesterol, lower blood sugar levels, and support heart health. The antioxidant properties of onions may help prevent cancer. Its antibacterial and antifungal properties make it useful medicine in treating cuts, wounds, skin fungus, tooth aches, preventing infections, and as an insect repellent. Onion acts as a natural anti-blood clotting agent. Onions are a rich source of quercetin, I think, <laughs> uh, vitamin C, B6, B1, and K, biotin, chromium, calcium, dietary fiber, and folic acid. They are also a source of sulfur, which promotes healing and supports the liver. I first became aware of onion medicine when my grandmother prepared an onion poultice on a deep wound I got as a child. It was one summer when my brothers and I stayed with her in Kawa, Kawa? Hawaii in the early 1970s again to please forgive me if I pronounce any of these things the wrong way um and I so yeah so visiting visiting their grandmother in Hawaii in the early 1970s and I cut my foot climbing up the famous big rock big rock at Waima Bay <laughs> that evening my grandmother Tutu told me that if a that if a piece of that volcanic rock or coral was in my foot, it could grow. It could grow. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> she said that the onion poultice would pull it out and draw out the affection too. It worked. Today I have a foot without a rock or a coral growth. <laughs> so the preparation application. So it can be used as a tea, or a tonic, or a decoction. So they say use a half of half to one cup of raw chopped or sliced onions to one cup of warm water. Cover and steep for 10 to 15 minutes and drink. For stronger brewers to make a decoction, increase the ratio of onions to water and after covering and steeping for 10 to 15 minutes, let it sit for 3 to 60 minutes, then drink. Optional, add a few slices of fresh raw ginger while steeping and sweeten with honey. Onion cough syrup. Slice one onion evenly, place the base of the onion slice side up in a glass jar and pour honey over it. In the same way you would make a sandwich, place an onion slice on top of the onion base with the honey in between and pour more honey on top. Continue to layer the onion slices with honey, 
to the top of the jar. Optionally, other healing herbs can be added in the jar as the onions are being layered, such as garlic, mullein, peppermint, and slippery elm bark. When finished, tightly close the top of the jar. Let mixture sit for 24 hours in a safe place on the counter or in a cabinet. The honey will pull out and absorb the onion medicine. Take a teaspoon of onion medicated honey as needed to relieve cough, congestion, and throat irritation. You can leave the onions in the jar or remove after two days. Keep refrigerated. So it can also be used for a poultice, super broth, tonic for colds, flu, and infection. Oh, that's really awesome. I'm going to go to the next one just so I can like keep uh, with the time and stuff. Uh, so the next one I decided to do was honey because again, that's something that is very like accessible to all of us, um, which you can buy honey store bought. Um, but two, it probably would also be very beneficial if, um, you like found like uh honey that can be sourced like straight from, uh, a farm or something like that. So honey can be used for inflammation, pain, and infections. So the medicinal properties, antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, antioxidant, antiseptic, demulcent, emollient, nutritive. Health benefits like castor oil, cod liver oil, and other staple medicines in African-American healing traditions. Honey is a powerful healing agent with numerous benefits that go far beyond its sweet taste and its intended use. Honey's antimicrobial and antibacterial properties kill viruses, bacteria, and fungus, and its anti-inflammatory properties help treat pain and inflammation. In, in African-American healing traditions, honey was often used to sweeten terrible-tasting medicine and make it easier to go down, especially for children. When added in remedies to treat colds and flu, honey's medicinal properties help, help treat hacking cough, sore throat, sinus, lung, and chest infections and pain. Some practitioners also used honey to treat wounds, cuts, and burns. When applied directly to the affected area, honey acts as an agent that accelerates wound healing and prevents infection. Honey's anti-inflammatory properties may help in treating arthritis, rheumatism, and the associated pain. Honey's other health benefits are immediate energy booster, stimulates the immune system, and may have anti-cancer properties. Honey is a food and medicine rich with minerals like magnesium, potassium, calcium, sodium chlorine, sulfur, iron, and phosphate. It also expels mucus. Honey contains vitamins B1, B2, C, B6, B5, and B3, and several kinds of hormones. Okay, so you can use honey for sore throat. Swallow one teaspoon of honey by first letting it sit in your mouth until it melts, and then let the honey go down your throat. The antibacterial, antimicrobial, and antiseptic properties will begin to treat the ailment. Do not drink any liquids for 15 minutes after swallowing to allow the medicine to work. Wounds, burns, and cuts. Apply a generous amount of honey to a dressing first and then apply the dressing to the affected area. Change the dressing two to three times a day depending on wound seepage. Note, cooking honey or adding to high degree temperatures destroys the nutritional and medicinal benefits. Cautions. Many health professionals suggest not giving honey to children under 12 months of age because it may contain spores of bacteria that cause botulism. Hmm. That's interesting. But like I said, though, honey, you know, is a great, um, easy, accessible thing for everybody to use. So, um, I think, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these, um, a lot of these um, ingredients and stuff like that can be easily accessed by anybody, you know, just going to like your local store. Um, and then obviously following along with the book, it kind of tells you how to prepare it. Um, and then what things that it will treat for you, which is like really awesome. Um, and one of the cool things about this event is uh, they're going to be um giving away one of these books to the viewers and so i think that this is this will be like an awesome opportunity you know if holistic healing and i know this is something i've been doing like more research into and stuff like that um but kind of finding more like holistic and natural ways of healing especially within like um the Af like the black community is something that like i've been researching and have been very like interested in seeing how our ancestors and stuff like that used um, you know, the natural, 
um, ingredients and stuff around them just in their, you know, in their lives that they use to kind of help with these ailments. So, uh, so flaxseed is another one I decided to do because again, that's something very easily accessible. Um, so you can use flaxseed for headaches and digestion. Medicinal properties are anti-cancer, anti-cholesterol, anti-inflammatory, hormone, hormone balancer for, menop for menopause and, P and PMS and laxatives. Health benefits are flaxseed is the richest source of omega-3 in the plant kingdom. It also contains abundance of three essential nutrients that our bodies do not produce but need for optimal health. Omega-3 essential fatty acids, omega-6 essential fatty acids, and lignans. Flaxseed also contains both soluble and insoluble, insoluble fiber, which is necess necessary for healthy digestion, absorption of nutrients, and regular elimination. One of the ways flaxseed was used in traditional black folk medicine was to make a poultice and apply it to the forehead to treat headaches and migraines. Flaxseed medicine taken regularly in the form of flaxseed oil or meal may also help prevent and treat many chronic health conditions such as high cholesterol, high disease, heart disease, menopausal symptoms like hot flashes, diabetes, arthritis, rheumatism, inflammation, high blood pressure, irritable bowel syndrome, digestion disorders, anxiety and nervous disorders, headaches, migraines, and more. It's difficult to, di to digest the whole flaxseed because of its hard shell which will pass through you undigested so the best way to benefit from flaxseed medicine is by ingestion ingesting the oil or meal flaxseed meal is prepared by grinding the seed in a grinder or with a mortal and pestle so the preparation application so daily health maintenance take one to two tablespoons of flaxseed oil or one to one to three tablespoons of ground flaxseed per day add the meal or oil to cereal oatmeal drinks baking recipes vegetables soups casserole salads and more for baking substitute one fourth to one half cup of flour with ground flaxseed meal if the recipe calls for two or more cups of flour for a poultice for treating for headaches, sores, boils, inflammation, and skin conditions, take two tablespoons of ground flaxseed and stir in half to one cup of hot water. A gel mixture will form. Put this mixture into a cloth and put on affected area. Rub flaxseed oil or castor oil on the area prior to applying the poultice. Hmm. Okay. The next one I decided to do was eucalyptus, which helps with colds, congestion, respiratory ailments, flea repellent, and insect bites, also known as blue gum or red gum. Medicinal properties, antiseptic, decongestant. Eucalyptus medicine is most often used to treat allergies, colds, sinus and chest congestion, respiratory problems, cough, sore throat, minor cuts, muscle strains, insect bites, and as a flea repellent. Eucalyptus medicine is made in the form of teas, salves, oils, inhalants, and washes. The oil in the eucalyptus leaf has the medicinal properties and is released when the leaf is steamed, steeped, boiled, bruised, or crushed. For tea, use one-fourth to one-half teaspoon of dried leaves or one teaspoon of fresh leaves per cup of hot water. Cover and steep for 10 to 15 minutes, then strain. Drink up to three cups per day. Add lemon and honey for additional flavor and healing properties. Eucalyptus oil or salve. Use as an insect repellent or antiseptic for sores, cuts, cuts and wounds, or to treat boils, alleviate arthritis, and aching joints. For direct immediate use, crush or bruise the leaves to release the oil and then rub the leaf on affected area. How to make eucalyptus oil. So they have a, a thing in here for making uh, eucalyptus oil and then how to make a salve or liniment. And then it tells us about flea and insect repellent. Uh, so take several branches of eucalyptus with the leaves on them and place under your couch, bed, in the doghouse, or in any area with flea infestation. Replace after one month. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, like one of the other cool things that I thought uh, was in this book is that they have a section specifically dedicated to like um, pets and stuff. So like natural ways to treat ailments like with your animals and different stuff like that uh, is something that I thought was really cool. Uh, oh, so yeah. So I decided to do dogwood next because 
obviously as like uh it's getting warmer the trees are blooming and all that stuff like that we do have a lot of dogwood trees uh here in lawrence um you know and i know like they have like that kind of distinct smell um so i decided to do these ones because this is something like we have here in lawrence like right now like all the trees and stuff are blooming um so this is something you could literally go in pick and then use uh if you wish so uh the black gum dogwood or pick ash or prickly ash trees are all commonly referred to as the toothbrush tree also known yeah <laughs> also known as dog tree toothbrush tree so the medicinal properties are astringent feb febrifuge stimulant general health tonic so health benefits of dogwood trees is many used twigs from the dogwood tree many used twigs from the dogwood tree to clean their teeth and maintain healthy gums the twig was used as a toothpick and chewing stick and the frayed ends as a toothbrush the astringent property in dogwood helped to keep gums and teeth healthy dogwood bark was made into a strong tea to treat intestinal worms measles and diarrhea and into a poultice to treat cuts and other skin disorders Dogwood medicine was often used during the Civil War. Preparation and application. Tea slash decoction. So use, use the dried bark only. Put one teaspoon of dried bark in two cups of hot water. Cover and steep for 20 minutes for a tea and 30 minutes for a strong decoction. Drink one cup four to six times a day for worms. Toothbrush slash tooth, teeth cleaning. Pick a fresh twig about five to seven inches long. Use the end as a toothpick to clean teeth, then put in mouth as a chew stick, letting your saliva soften and fray the ends. When the ends are fanned out and become brush-like, gently brush your teeth and gums. Huh. Okay. So I said that I decided to do corn. Again, um, another staple in Kansas life is, um, especially if you live, you know, kind of more rurally is corn. So I thought it would be awesome, uh, to, to feature that in, in this too. So corn shuck, corn husk, corn silk is used for bladder infection, urinary tract infections. Also known as mother's hair, medicinal properties are anti-inflammatory, demulcent, detoxifier, diuretic, and mild stimulant health benefits are the corn silk inside of the husk contain the medicine corn silk medicine is often used to treat ailments associated with acute bladder and urinary tract infections cystitis kidney stones and prostate disorders water retention slash edema and bedwetting corn silk is rich with potassium and vitamin k corn silk is also known to lower blood sugar increase insulin and lower blood pressure Corn silk poultices were used to treat inf inflammation. Poultices prepared with the silk and cooked kernels have also helped to relieve sores, wounds, contusions, and rheumatic pains. Today, most corn is grown from GMO seeds that are specifically engineered so that the seeds themselves act as an insecticide to control pests. The result is a crop that may produce a different medicinal agency in corn and corn than when the plant was Properly used in African American healing traditions before such modifications were implemented. Preparation and application. So it can be used as a, a, like in like a tea. Um, so place the corn silk in a pot of hot water, making sure the water covers one to two inches above the silk. Cover and steep for 10 to 15 minutes. Strain and drink. You may add lemon or honey for flavor. Hmm. Okay, I decided to do castor oil next. Also known as castor or aranda, I think. Uh, so medicinal properties are anti-inflammatory, antifungal, antioxidant, immune booster, purgative. Castor oil has many wonderful health benefits and has been used medicinally for thousands of years, although most people are only familiar with it as a strong laxative. Castor oil is a fatty acid that is 90% ricinolic acid which is known to prevent illness and strengthen the immune system 
Castor oil medicine can be taken internally or applied externally, and poultices and packs are rubbed directly on the affected area. Castor oil's anti-inflammatory properties help treat pain associated with arthritis and rheumatism. Castor oil packs applied externally may help to detoxify the body, eliminate lymphatic congestion, increase white blood cells, and reduce inflammation. Castor oil has also been used to treat many everyday problems such as yeast infections, constipation, gastrointestinal problems, menstrual disorders, migraines, acne, sunburn, athlete's foot, ringworm, skin abrasions, and inflammation. In pregnant women, castor oil has been used to induce labor. So internal, so there's, so it, the preparation application they have for it is internal and external. So for internal, it's used as a laxative or purgative. So you take one teaspoon in the morning. You can mix the oil with a juice such as orange, cranberry, or ginger to take away the taste. You should fill the effects in six to 12 hours. Do not take continuously for more than three days. External. They have it for, you can make a castor oil wrap for arthritis, rheumatism, or joint pain. Pack or poultice to treat a range of internal conditions. Like, so it can help with increased circulation, promote elimination and healing of tissues and organs underneath the skin so as to stimulate liver. Relieve pain, increase the production of white blood cells, stimulate lymphatic circulation, eliminate lymphatic congestion, reduce inflammation, improve digestion, and reduce menstrual discomfort such as cramps, cysts, and other irregularities. The castor oil medicine is lowered into the skin to treat and detoxify the body. Okay, I got two, two more for you guys. So banana peel. This one I thought was like really cool. <laughs> um, and again, very accessible. You can get it at your local store or, um, you know, uh, either at the store or if you like to go to, um, you know, what is it called? I'm blanking on it. The food markets and stuff. You can go there too. Um, so the medicinal properties are antifungal, antibiotic, anti-inflammatory, and high potassium. So banana peels can be used for arthritis, warts, eczema, psoriasis, burns and scalds, and acne. So health benefits are banana peel contains natural antiseptic and cooling properties that can help reduce symptoms caused by skin conditions. Itching from insects and poison ivy may be relieved by rubbing the inside of the banana peel on affected area. The banana peel was also placed on the forehead to relieve headache pain. Bananas and the peel are high in vitamins and potassium, which fight against arthritis and muscle cramps. Preparation application. For skin conditions such as psoriasis, eczema, acne, and itching, rub the inside of the banana peel on affected area and leave on for 20 to 30 minutes, allowing the skin to absorb the vitamins and nutrients. Leave on until the inside of the peel turns dark. Mix chopped slash crushed banana peel and cold tar and make a paste. Rub on affected area two to three times a day. For arthritis and muscle cramps, rub the inside of the banana peel on affected area and leave on overnight as a poultice. Hold the peel in place by wrapping with a cloth or bandage. Okay, the last one I decided to do is aloe vera. Because I feel like this is something that a lot of people use already. Um, so if you do use it already, you probably know some of this stuff. And if you don't, then, um, you know, this will be good to learn about. Because it, it, it can be used for lots of different things. Um, so it can be used for cuts, burns, digestion, inflammation, skin conditions. Also known as aloe, medicinal properties all alterative, antibacterial, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, antiseptic, antiviral, astringent, cell proliferant, detoxifier, emollient, uh, immune stimulant, and vermifuge. The succulent, this succulent has innumerable health, innumerable health benefits. Aloe vera nourishes the body with high amounts of antioxidants, minerals, vitamins A, C, and E, amino acids, enzymes, and fatty acids. When taken internally, aloe vera is a general tonic for overall health and treating digestion and gastrointestinal disorders. Aloe may alkalize the body and restore a balanced pH. 
Aloe may boost immunity, help lower cholesterol levels, support kidney health, relieve constipation, and reduce inflammation and pain. When used topically, aloe helps speed the healing process and cuts wounds and burns and helps prevent infection. Aloe gel also helps to soothe many skin conditions and is an effective skin moisturizer. Mo- Preparation and application. Most people cut a leaf directly from the plant and scooped out the inside, the gel, to use topically and internally for digestion. Internally, the gel was extracted by cutting one medium-sized leaf from the plant, slicing it open, and scooping out the gel. The gel was mixed in a juice or added to a little water, honey, and lemon to make a tonic. Poultice. Aloe gel was rubbed directly onto cuts, bruises, scrapes, burns, wounds, and other skin conditions two to three times daily. It was also used to treat sore muscles and arthritis pain, inflammation to moisturize the skin, and to treat acne, rashes, and other conditions. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, lots of good stuff in this book. Honestly, I feel like anything that you have a problem with, you could probably find, like, a natural and holistic solution for that, like, has been collected and used by um, black folks in this country, you know, since we were taken here. So, um, I think that it's really awesome that, like, this, that the author you know like her research and stuff was going and actually like apprenticing um you know with these healers and with um these folks in our community like who have been doing this natural way of healing for so long and like how there's a book where these things are actually like passed down into for people uh to benefit from and you know kind of learn about and stuff like that uh it definitely like gives a feeling of kind of like reconnecting with that healing within like um like our culture and stuff which is really nice because uh a lot of the things um that were kind of lost to our ancestors when they were taken here you know a lot of that stuff wasn't written down a lot of that stuff was um very like oral and like and kind of like spoken so to have something that's actually like written is actually really awesome uh to read about and so i look forward to reading this book um i look forward to like um other people being able to read this book i know that they're gonna like have a copy a copy i believe um in the emily taylor center which is amazing i hope everyone can benefit from that um and so yeah like i'm i was very happy and excited to be part of this uh program um put on by the emily taylor center so i appreciate the opportunity i'm glad i got to come read for you guys today um i hope you watch it i hope you like learn some stuff you didn't know um and i hope that you find some benefits from this book like i am so thank you so much have a good rest of your tuesday